So I'm recording this session, and uh, if you can remember my name, which I understand it's a difficult task, if you can remember my name, it's John Lemesny. At john.lemesny.com, I put up basically every presentation that I do, either in slide form or video form. So uh, you can go and see this presentation again, or you can even go back and probably see the presentation that I gave last time. So uh, Pinterest. Who here is a Pinterest user? <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of these. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll give you some insight. This is my first time giving this presentation. I'm very excited about it because I think that uh, Pinterest has great potential as a social network and great potential for branding, especially for libraries. I think that uh, audience connection is of a very um, high level. The, the people who use Pinterest typically use it for about seven hours a month. and um, that stickiness, that idea that somebody's in a system and stays there that long on average means that you can have their eyes for that length of time. If you can get somebody into a system like Facebook, Facebook is, has a much higher retention rate. Um, if you can get somebody into a system, you potentially have a captive audience because they're there already. And so if you can find things that are interesting to them, you can get them interested about what it is that you do. And as librarians, you, you do a lot, right? So, what are some of the things that you do as librarians? Outreach. Outreach. What else? Blogging for the organization. Absolutely. <laughs> what else? Marketing. Marketing. When somebody walks into your library, what, what are they expecting to find? Books. Sometimes. Online resources. resources. Online resources. Media, right? Yeah. Programming. Programming is, is huge in many public libraries, at the very least, and many academic libraries. What else? Now these people want access to apps. Apps, absolutely. I <laughs> know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, each of those things can be represented digitally in Pinterest. And because you have potential customers, uh, patrons, users, in that system, you can guide them to the use of your library, either remotely or in person. Hopefully both, right? So uh, before we go too deep in, I'll give you a look at my agenda. Is there anything that anybody specifically wants to talk about before we get started? And if it's already part of the program, then we'll get to it when we get to it. Why are you here? Why do you want to learn about Pinterest? Obviously, it's not because you have a love for <laughs> a love for it because many of you are not users. Um, what do you want to know about? What should I be sure not to miss? Yes. If, if you can do a demo, I'm, I'm on it. I haven't used it a lot. I'm kind of waiting for somebody to give me a real quick lead through. Yep. Um, I haven't used it a lot because I don't want everything to show up on Facebook. I haven't figured out how to okay. stop that from happening. Yep. Um, and I'm here. Person I know from Stanford who's looking for Pinterest now, and I'm very fascinated to see what you have to say so I can relate it back to her. Fantastic. <laughs> and you can share my video with that exactly. person, of course. Um, we are going to talk about it, that at length, and I will give demonstrations at several points. Okay. So we'll, we'll go into that. Anything else anybody wants to talk about? Nobody wants to talk about the terms of service? Bob. <laughs> you already said it's on there. Yeah. <laughs> and, and just organizational use. I mean, I think of a library organization that's similar to this. Um, they're interested in social media outlets. Absolutely. And this is a key social media outlet right now. Um, <laughs> Facebook is a given, right? Twitter is probably a given. I personally believe that Twitter is, is potentially waning as a great social media platform. But that's me personally. I, a lot of people don't share that view. Um, Pinterest, I think, for, especially for an audience that is visually engaged, such as readers, <laughs> or such as uh, users of media, right? DVDs or uh, audio. Uh, all those things can be become attractive on Pinterest. And as librarians, you should be aware of it as a platform. There was a question over here. Yes. Um, this is different than Google Plus, obviously. Oh, yeah. But would you say that Google Plus is like leaning or relaxing? I'll tell you, I love Google Plus. But I, I love it very sadly. <laughs> and the reason is because I'm, I'm sort of a Google fanboy. That I'm, I'm really into their philosophy. I really like their ideas. I like the way that they manage their products. I like the products that they give. I like their services. I will use a Google product before I'll use 
another equivalent product by another vendor. Uh, but uh, Google Plus is an, is an add-on. Google Plus is, is, is a strategy that Google is applying in a very loose way. Uh, they would love for a lot of people to be in that system, and a lot of people are in that system by default, because when you use uh, Gmail, or you use Google Docs, or you use any of their other fabulous products, uh, you typically very easily opt in to using Google+. It's not a mandate, but it's, it's almost a given. If you are using Google products, you probably already have a Google Plus account, uh, which is centered around a profile. And then you can go in just like Facebook and you can add people to groups and you can have it search through your contacts and you can say, I want these people to be my library and friends and when I want to message them and blah, blah, blah. There are great benefits uh, for me, for example, when I use my camera on my phone. My phone is Android based and I have a Google Plus application and I have it set up so that it will automatically uh, put photos that I take into a secret place and I can easily share them on Google Plus. The unfortunate thing is that most of the people who I know are not on that system and not really using it very actively. Even if they're on it, they're not using it very actively. And so um, what I find is there's a lot of people in Europe and in Asia who friend me or follow me on, on Google Plus that I don't know and probably will never meet. And that's not very useful to me. As opposed to Facebook, which has had a long head start and has a much more direct relational value to me as a user. Uh, Google Plus, does, I don't mind Google Plus, but I don't use it either. And, and I should be their key user. That, that's the long and short of it. Uh, Pinterest is completely different. Google Plus has Hangouts, which are actually very useful. Hangouts are a, a web conferencing capability uh, with, add with extras. And the extras are things like um, the ability to whiteboard remotely with collaborate with other people. And integrates with Docs. So if you want to start up a video session and hang out with somebody and work with them collaboratively on Google Docs, you can do that. You can share videos. You can share your desktop uh, for free, which many other applications require you to pay for that service. And so I love Google Plus for that particular set of features. The rest of it is really just a repeat of many of, of what the other social networks do. Pinterest does one thing and does one thing very, very well and that is social visual bookmarking. Google doesn't do that at all. I, I can share pictures on, on Google+, Plus, but it's not quite the same. And when we demonstrate it, you'll, you'll see, especially if you're familiar with Google+, Plus, what the differences are. Google+, Plus is an entire social network with many, many features and, and lots of things that you can do, but it doesn't have traction yet, and I personally believe it probably won't. And this is different than delicious. It, it is related to delicious, and I'm so happy that you said that, but it is not the same thing. Other questions? All right. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at things like delicious. Who here is a delicious, former delicious user, probably? Yeah. Still. 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 Okay, good. I'm very glad to hear that. And they would be very glad to hear that, too. Yahoo had significance in the technology world. Uh, we're going to look at other services that do sort of what Pinterest does but uh, has not had the kind of traction that Pinterest has had in a very short period of time. Even though it's a relatively old company, it's been around, uh, around about two years. And the uh, creator of Pinterest, Ben, who shows up in every email and says, Ben and the Pinterest team, uh, will tell you the story of why for a year and a half it languished, and then suddenly there's like a, what, what's called a hockey stick uh, growth, where uh, if you look at um, people in the system, it goes like this and it goes like that. Right, so everybody's in Pinterest all of a sudden, and there's, it's a media darling right now, and also a target, which we're going to talk about too. Uh, pinning, repinning, following, liking, that's essentially the demo, first demo portion of Pinterest, where I'm going to go in and I'm going to show you what the point of the system is. Uh, comments and karma, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how you should be using Pinterest in its best possible way, as opposed to what many people do, which is go in, sign up for an account, say, I don't know what this is for, and leave it, right? Uh, branding best practices, we're going to talk about uh, condensation of a lot of sources uh, and common sense in Pinterest, the way that you should be using it as a library entity and as a personal entity. Uh, group boards and collaboration, we're going to talk about the unique feature uh, in visual bookmarking where you can work with others in order to create a collaborative space. Uh, copyright and fair use, which uh, Pinterest has come under some fire recently for 
its um, general lack of sense about copyright and fair use and how you should approach it, especially as information literally, uh, literate, uh, literacy specialists. You should not use this system any differently than you would use any other system in respect to copyright. And that's my point. Uh, filtering and search. Uh, in order to find pins that are relevant to you, there have to be great search tools. I wouldn't say that there are great search tools right now, but there are some tools, and they will improve over time. And Pinterest has already shown by a very recent change in its profile uh, structure on its page that they are interested in changing their system for the better. Uh, we're going to talk about settings where we will talk about how to, for example, not share with Facebook if you don't want to. And then suggested improvements. These are my personal suggestions for the way that Pinterest needs to improve in order to become a real strong set of tools. Right now, it's very useful, but it's not as useful as it could be. Okay? Good. Have you sent your suggestions to them? Yeah, not directly. I, what, I, what, what I'm planning to do, actually, is I just created a pin board, which is a group of pins, uh, called Suggestions for Pinterest. And what I hope to do is to use the system in order to spread the message about it, so that if I'm the only one who's saying something, it's a very small whisper in the ear of Pinterest. But if I put it out there and people share it, and then people share it on those boards, and people share it on those boards, all of a sudden it starts to flood the system. And Pinterest says, wow, I'm seeing this again and again and again. I don't really care where it started, but I'm, I need to pay attention to this. So I'm trying to use the system in order to inform the system. Socio-visual bookmarking precedent. So uh, Delicious, for those of you who don't know, was a so, is a social bookmarking site. I said was because I, I fear that it suffered a kind of death when Yahoo, uh, to its detriment, who owns Delicious, sent out a slide. A slide was leaked from a presentation in which they said, Delicious and these other services that we currently own are going to be um, sunsetted. Sunsetted? Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, the, the point of that is that they, they are not necessarily actively developing those tools anymore, which means that the functionality that's there is probably going to be the functionality that it will have, period. And life goes on, especially in technology. And so as new functionality comes along, as other uh, competitors showed, um, like Digo, you can do other things besides what Delicious did, and sometimes those things can be useful. It's nice that Delicious has such great functionality and it had a great user base, uh, but if you're going to stop developing it, it means essentially that it's dead or going to be dead. And so I stopped investing in it, and I was one of their major investors. I was putting in uh, bookmarks into Delicious all the time. Delicious, if you don't know, uh, social bookmarking. It means that me and other people would go into that system, and when we found the bookmark, instead of sharing it just with ourselves on our bookmark bar, we would save it to delicious. And by doing that, I had a hub by which other people could find out what I was bookmarking. But more importantly, when I went to another destination, even a machine I had never seen before, it meant that I had access to my bookmarks. So it wasn't like my work machine and my laptop and my home machine and my home machine number two and my home machine number three and my <laughs> third, you know, the, the machine that I run into in the, in the hall, it's a kiosk machine. It means that all those machines could all have the same bookmark. So I didn't have to remember, which is the whole point of bookmarking, so you don't have to remember, you don't have to remember what it is that uh, you were trying to get to. Um, and I probably had 300 or 400 pins in, in Delicious. But the idea was, you put it up into a central place instead of relying on a single entity, a single node being represented in all the various places that you are visiting, all the various uh, machines you are visiting, whether it be your phone or whatever. So the idea of social bookmarking became popular with Delicious, and uh, they did a great job of it. Digo made great use of the idea that Delicious was potentially dying. When this news came out that uh, Delicious was potentially not any longer developing their tool, they said, hey, here's a tool where you can export all of your Delicious bookmarks into our system very easily in one click. And here are some extra features like group collaboration on uh, bookmarks. 
So let's say that you wanted to have an SLA PT Digo group where every time you came across a useful pin, a useful pin, a useful bookmark for libraries or a useful bookmark for uh, programming or a useful bookmark for something going on in Trenton, you could share it as a group. You could all sort of collaborate and put those pins in the same place and then share them. So uh, Digo took all the features in Delicious, represented them just in a different system, and then added on extra functionality that was not in Delicious. So Digo, if, if you're interested in social bookmarking, Digo is a good thing to look at. Visual bookmarking. And I apologize because <laughs> This site is one of my favorite sites as a, as a visual artist and designer because it gives great inspiration. But not everything that you'll see here is necessarily G-rated or even PG-rated. So as I scroll through, please apologize. I, I apologize in advance if we come across anything that's sort of risque. It looks like the first thing we're looking at, maybe. So uh, what it is is a way for a limited set of users who uh, sort of prove themselves as visual uh, curators were invited into the system. And Pinterest also does, uh, does uh, usership by invitation only. So you have to either be invited directly or somebody has to invite you, somebody like on Facebook who, um, they, they don't have to be on Facebook. But you, if you get an invite into Pinterest, you can go in, otherwise you, you are just hoping to get in. At any rate, found, FFFFOUND.com, is a site where it's very, very exclusive. Only key people were ever allowed into that system, and they do not allow new people in. If, if I make a request for an account, they've refused me, and I've tried several times because it's an absolutely beautiful system. It's also been around for a very long time, at least six or eight years. And uh, the great thing about this is that if I see a, a image that I like, like this one. And I click on it, what it does is it gives me a bunch of related images that I may also be interested in. Uh, but also the exclusivity of it and the great curation that happens there means that every time I go to that site, I see hundreds of things that interest me as a visual designer. So uh, there is not also, also there is not any categorization in the way that we see Pinterest doing categorization. There's nothing that is library specific or could be library specific in found. It's very random and chaotic and beautiful in that random chaos, but not especially useful for a particular group who's looking to use it for a particular purpose, especially because you can't go in yourself. Unless you're a visual designer and you're looking to be inspired, in which case it's fabulous. Um, that being said, this is a precedent to Pinterest and a reason why Pinterest exists. We Heart It is similar to Delicious in, uh, I'm sorry, similar to um, Found in that it's mostly visually oriented and uh, inspirational, but it's much less exclusive. You can set up an account right away. And so you can go in, you can share your own images, you can heart other people's images, and you can see, again, very beautiful, but not necessarily, it's, what it's missing is practical functionality, unless you are looking to be visually inspired. Um, when I look through this site, what I'm looking for is if I want to make an image of my own, I want to find an interesting way to make that image. But that's not necessarily useful for librarians, let's say. But again, this is a precedent for what Pinterest is. John? Yes. Can I ask a question? Sure. The whole thing? Just from looking at like just a few things that we saw, it yeah. looks like we heart it has more photographs versus found which has more we, we really just got to the very tip of the iceberg on both of those sites. Okay. As you go deeper in, you see that there are some images that are more uh, graphically based, some images that are extremely minimalist, some images that are photographs, some images that are not really images at all, but rather uh, scrawlings on a piece of paper that have been captured by photography. So um, the, the common theme is that they are all images, but 
the content of the images varies so greatly. It, it, one is not any more photographic or graphic than another. Is there any overlap? Oh, sure. Uh, there is uh, incredible overlap between all of the systems that I'm talking about here. You find images from found on We Heart It, and you find images from We Heart It on found, and you find images from all of these on Pinterest. Very often they originate in any number of any number of these systems and end up on Pinterest because Pinterest is where people are investing their effort now. I do it myself. I, I read Pin from Found all the time. Other questions? Okay. So Pixie and, Vi Pixie and Visualize Us are uh, the same kinds of things. I could go in there, but it, it really is just beating the same horse. So I'm not going to do that. So let's talk about what Pinterest is. So this is Pinterest. What we see here is we have a search engine. We have the logo, which when you click on it, takes you to uh, the everything selection, where it shows everything that's being pinned on the system at one time. If you scroll over a little bit, there's the ability to add a new pin, which looks like this. You can add a pin, meaning that you can uh, use a link that has images on the web page that you're linking to. It will go and find images and let you choose them. So uh, let's go to found. Or uh, better yet, who wants to give me their library website? Please. I'm sorry. I'm at I'm sure you can find images there. I'm sorry? It's not, it's not a library website, but I should leave that word. Uh, okay. <clears throat> so, see one large image. This may work. Uh, typically, you would go to an interesting site, and you would use that as a basis for pinning. So, uh, you would want it to be a resource. Let's just imagine this is a resource, because I guess nobody wants to share a great resource from their own library site. Uh, but let's say we were on IEEE and we came across something that was useful. Let's actually try and find something useful. <laughs> yeah, I think those images yeah. are probably going to be too small. But let's see. So if I highlight this text, well, we'll, we'll get there. First thing I'll do is I'll copy this URL. Go back to my Pinterest, click on add a pin, paste in the URL, and click on find images. So here it gives me a preview of the images that it found on that site. I can navigate through. This is a video, incidentally. And here, I choose from pin boards. Pin boards are categorization methods. So I've made a bunch of categories that I choose to pin about, pin being a verb. <laughs> uh, so if this video is particularly useful because it represents photography in art, which is something I'm interested in, I would categorize it that way. Uh, I'm on a group board. That's why those people are over there for picture book recommendations, which has its own culture to it. As a matter of fact, I used to I used to put up books there that were interesting to me that were mostly picture-based, but they weren't for kids. And I got a note from the person who owned the board saying, that's not really what I meant. It's Jamie, actually. Yeah, uh, I'm on that group. I don't want to be on that group. Yeah. Tell me how to get off of it. <laughs> you usually have to send a note. Because I'm like, I don't teach children. Right. <laughs> Uh, pictures for presentations. As a presenter, I and other presenters belong to this board because sometimes you need to find great images for your presentations. And so pinning to that, you're probably on that board too, right? I'm the one who created that group. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, and that's been a really useful board, actually. I, maybe people actually started using it. I stopped looking at it because nobody was using it. Yeah, well, usually you get notified. Well, uh, anyway. <laughs> Uh, Pinterest suggestions is the board that I was telling you about where I'm putting up stuff about uh, stuff that I think needs to be suggested to Pinterest, and I'm hoping that people re will repin it. Portfolio is a portfolio of my graphic design work. And so these are all uh, image-oriented ways of linking 
And in fact, if, if I put in a site and it did not find any images on there, it would say, no images found, you can't pin this. It, it is that tied to visual imagery or video. So how is, how is your Pinterest suggestions um, image? Is it like it's something I created. Uh -huh. So I went into a graphic design application called Inkscape. I wrote out in a, in a design uh -huh. the thing that I wanted to say, and then I uploaded it as opposed to going to a site. So at any rate, uh, I have no idea what this video is about because we're just playing around. But let's say that it was uh, something that I wanted to acquire. So I'd choose acquire. I would describe my pin. Now, this is an important aspect to note for librarians because you want to do best practice. Uh, one of the complaints with Pinterest is there is too free a flow of unattributed images and videos. And so in the same way that you would attribute anything else that you would do in a scholarly way, possibly in APA format, possibly in some other format, you should try to do that here. Am I saying that that's what you're going to do? Probably not. <laughs> but it, that is best practice. So you would put the title of the piece. You would put the author of the piece. You would put possibly circa. You would put um, a hashtag and tell somebody why you're pinning it. You would put the original URL that you found it at. Uh, and it's really great if you find a site that has all that information, because you can just highlight it, click on a pin it button, and it will automatically suck that into the description. So it makes it a lot easier for you, yes. Do you need permission? It depends on the original piece. Okay. So we are protected in some way, and we're going to get into this later. We are protected in some ways due to fair use. So if we are, for example, making commentary, or if we are doing satire, or if we are um, informing, using the platform as a learning mechanism, if we're doing pedagogy. If we are not repaying for our own personal gain, but rather for the gain of the original piece, and if the piece is on a public website, you, you really are not doing any damage by linking to it because you'd be allowed in any case to link to it, despite what um, News Corp has to say about the matter, right? You know about the controversy with uh, News Corp where um, Rupert Murdoch says, how dare they link to my stuff? We, we did all this work to, to make value for this news item. So now they put everything behind a paywall, mm -hmm. which means that Pinterest couldn't get to it, right? So they're protecting themselves from being seen. Unfortunately, they're probably protecting themselves to the, to the point where they'll lose viewership. But, at any rate, a very key question is, are we allowed? And the, the fact is, by linking to it, by linking to the original, not necessarily a repost or a repost of a repost or a repost of a re, that we are protecting the original copyright holder. How many people on Pinterest do the work to attribute properly, find background information, put actual extra content in their description in order to add value to the pin? Not many. But that is not Pinterest's fault. It's like blaming a uh, burnt house on fire. You know, it's you, you can use a fire to cook, or you can use a fire to do damage. It's it's not Pinterest's fault necessarily, as opposed to the terms of service, which we'll look at later, which is their fault and is problematic. Um, but from the from the viewpoint of copyright holders, the fear in Pinterest is, I think, a bit misguided, because the same fear needs to exist for Facebook. The same fear needs to exist for Twitter. The same fear needs to exist for documents, for a piece of paper, for a bathroom wall. Anywhere where you are denying copyright, you are denying copyright. It has nothing to do with this platform per se. Okay? Okay. So I'm going to cancel this pin, because I, I really don't want to pin that. Uh, alternatively, you can upload a pin. And by uploading a pin, you have more control over the way that content is used. So if you're uploading an original piece, for example, or a photo that you've taken in your library, or a photo or a video of a uh, program that you did recently at your library, or uh, something on the wall that is an artifact that's part of a display, or um, what else is visual that you would want to share with patrons or potential patrons? A book cover. Right. So you could go, for example, to your uh, ILS 
And you could hopefully, if there is an image on the page for an item in your iOS, whether it be a book cover, whether it be a video, whether it be some shareable item, you would click on the pin bookmarklet, which I'm about to show you in a second. You see where it says pin it up there? You would click on your pin it button. It would look through your page for images, including the image in your iOS. You would click on that image. Your description, hopefully, you would highlight before you clicked on pin it. So that would all that uh, category, uh, category information and uh, citation information would be included in your pin. And you would have it on a pin board that maybe was uh, new acquisitions, or uh, hot right now, or whatever, right? What, what are the other ways that you might categorize a series of pieces of media to your patrons? Use, I'm sorry? Band. Band. Useful for research. Uh, related to our programming. A, a particular topic. Let's say that you are uh, a public library that has a particular interest in archiving artifacts from the community in your community. Uh, you might focus on that by making a pin board about those items. If you're an academic library and you're doing a lot of research about some particular topic, let's say that we are at Princeton and our topic is uh, nuclear research or something like that, then you might have a pin board that reflects that, right? So by categorizing in that way, you are reinforcing your brand in a way that you couldn't do so easily somewhere else. You can't do that kind of categorization on Facebook. You can't do that kind of categorization in delicious, oh, well, I guess you could. But it wouldn't have the visual aspect, which is so important to so many people. I, as a visual thinker, am so much more interested in seeing a board of pins than I am in seeing a mile-long page of text. That's not just me. That's a lot of people. And they're potential customers of yours who want to know something about your brand. And they are already spending seven hours a month looking at Pinterest. Why are they not looking at your stuff? Because you're not on there yet. <laughs> you could have those like, codes or something. Oh, QR codes. You could have QR codes. Um, that would be potentially useful. Uh, usually QR codes would be something that would be physical. Like we could have a QR code here uh, that people could scan with their phone and you take them to your Pinterest page. I would do that too. Um, but by using QR codes, if you had, I wouldn't necessarily do it on a number of boards. I might make one board that had QR codes for various purposes. Like if you wanted to direct somebody to a certain portion of your iOS, or if you wanted to direct somebody to a gallery of images related to your library, or you wanted to uh, take somebody to some other place, uh, you could use QR codes. I myself get frustrated scanning QR codes on my computer. I have a much better time scanning off a piece of paper. And so uh, one thing you could do, in my opinion, with QR codes is to have QR codes be an integral part of the physical space of your library. and use the QR codes to direct people to Pinterest or to Facebook or some other place, I would focus on Pinterest. And if you're a public library with a, a children's programming uh, group, you might have a QR code who, that points to your Pinterest board on children's programming, for example. Right? Hopefully, by these examples, I, I don't mean to exclude anybody, you can determine your own best use for this. This is just off the top of my head what you might do with this system. Okay. So we're in the middle of a pin. If I scroll through images on my, these could be photos, they don't have to be designs per se. So this is something that I designed. I'm going to put it in my portfolio board. If everybody did this when they put something up on Pinterest, the arguments against 
uh, copyright violation or the arguments for copyright violation with Pinterest would be dismissed. But people don't do this work, this little tiny bit of extra work. Very often because they don't know the origin of the thing that they're pinning, which is problematic, or they don't own the thing that they're pinning, which is potentially problematic. But you could do this work with the thing, the original thing that you're pinning, especially if you're doing it for the purposes of libraries, because librarians know how to cite properly. Right? So you're the best group to try to get the word out about Pinterest not being the problem, but rather the proper work being done being the problem. Information literacy, making sure that the copyright holder is respected, and so forth. Okay? I click on pin it. It takes just a second. That number there, it says 436. It's because you have a limit of 500 characters. You know how Twitter has a limit of 140 characters? Pinterest has a limit of 500 characters that you can use. And so um, you have to hold yourself to that, or you, it'll get clicked. If you go in and, and you select five paragraphs and then use the pin it button, it will clip it to 500 characters. But how, how can visual characters? I'm sorry? I'm a little confused about the visual having a number of characters. The, the visual does not have any characters. When I'm referring to characters, I'm talking about the text-based characters, the ASCII text that is below in the description. Uh, uh, uh. This here. I, are you, so the citation, basically? My citation, my description, yeah. Okay. Pinterest would call it a description. I, I would argue that we should all refer to it as citation. Um, you have a limit of 500 ASCII characters that you can put in, including spaces, including punctuation, etc. Okay. Now, my best possible hope for this pin is that somebody sees it, they love it, and they repin it. Because the rule is that you share something, and two friends share it, and two of their friends share it, and two of their friends share it. And um, anybody here know Clay Shirky? Or uh, actually, who I'm thinking of is um, Purple Cow. No. Anybody know who I'm talking about? Purple Cow? No, Seth Godin. Oh, okay. Seth Godin. Uh, Seth Godin would say that ideas that are shared win. The idea that's shared wins. Mm -hmm. And it's no different for libraries. right? If you can take an idea such as your program, or your focus, your research focus, or your uh, mission, if it's a special mission, and people share that and get the word out to have people come back to your brand for that reason, your library wins as a result. So I'm not saying that this particular team will, will necessarily give me any followers, but uh, that's the idea. So that's the ad. Button. And I, here's where I can create a board, too. So if I have an idea such as um, I want to make a board that contains only pins that are suggestions for Pinterest, I would come in here and create a board there. And that's where I could then start to see that board in my list, that drop down, where I pin some. If I click on my name, it shows all of my various pin boards. This is a collaborative pin board with a friend where um, whenever we find something that's interesting to one another, we'll put it into this pin board. There's my portfolio with the latest pin. You can see that there's a large image and four smaller images. Those are your most recent five pins that you found. These could be videos as well as images. And uh, for example, right there is a video I stumbled upon an interview by Stephen Colbert of um, Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's actually going to be in New York on Friday for a free uh, show. And I just fell in love with it. And more importantly, the content of the video represents my philosophy. And I have a board called Philosophy. And if you look at my board, you can read through it from start to finish. And you'll get a pretty good idea of what I believe in, who I am as a person, what I think is important, and so on. Your library should probably have a philosophy board. <laughs> it should probably have a mission board. So that somebody who's wondering whether or not they're supposed to come to your library or be interested in your library can get a preview of what they should expect. When they walk through the door, they're going to get a sense of your culture. But they might get a preview of the culture by going to your boards and seeing the kinds of things that you like. 
Yes. So a board is kind of just like a public folder? Yeah. And that's a very, very interesting distinction that you make. A public folder. Public folder. Uh, Pinterest does not yet have private pin boards. And that is one of my suggestions. So let's, let's actually video <laughs> my suggestion board. Um, it is not normally this compressed. I have it compressed because of my projection. So normally you'd be able to see all of my boards all the way across, but I do a little scrolling back and forth. Uh, I'll just talk you through these. So here is a board just for me to collect textures that I think are interesting. Here's one where I collect uh, art and design, artists and designs I think are interesting. Here are things that I, as a generation Xer, find interesting because these are things that I ran across in my youth. Um, here are funny pins, which is a very common board. A lot of people usually have a humor board. Here's palettes. I collect uh, visual palettes so that when I'm doing a design, I can refer to those in order to make an interesting palette. I teach a class at Rider uh, to graduate students on uh, digital media social uh, communication. And so whenever I come across a pin that I think is interesting for my students, I'll put it here. And they all subscribe to this board. They don't necessarily subscribe to the rest of my boards, at least most of them don't. But they subscribe to this one because this is one way that I communicate with them to let them know that they should be paying attention to this kind of a thing. And so if I come across an infographic that uh, talks about a topic, such as this one. Anybody know about the story that was on uh, Public Radio International's program called This American Life in which Mike Daisy uh, did a bombastic uh, uh, monologue that he's had as a show for a while that talks about uh, the practices of Foxconn in China, in which they're developing, right? You, you all know about the story? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was the most ever listened to show in This American Life's history. It's a very popular show. Ira Blast, who runs that show, has come to Princeton to speak several times. At any rate, uh, it comes, it, a couple of people were uncomfortable with a couple of details. They went and researched the things that were wrong with the story, including talking to the translator who went with Mike Daisy. Mike Daisy lied about a lot of things. It turned out he lied about a lot of things. And uh, they just had a retraction. And so for my students, that's a very useful uh, study, a case study in digital media communication, because the story goes out. Everybody believes something, gets motivated behind something. Same thing with Coney 2012. Uh, gets motivated behind something, and then some facts come out, and you find out a little bit more, because truth is always fluctuating according to point of view and number of facts. And uh, I just thought it was a really interesting thing. So by putting up this pin, it gives them a way to go and research more about digital media communication on a large scale, and the story in particular on a small scale. This is how I use it in an educational setting. And I ask you, how could you use it in a library setting? How can you use it with your patrons in order to engage them, in order to inform them, in order to reinforce your brand a bit, right? So people can subscribe to a particular board? That's program? right. I, I will show you that next. So uh, these all say edit underneath because I own these boards. But if they were somebody else's boards, it would say follow. And I can then follow either an individual board or I can follow all boards of a particular person. I usually follow all boards just because it's easier. And if I see something in my stream of uh, pins that is not really in keeping with my philosophy, I will unfollow that particular board. Um, I usually give people the benefit of the doubt first. And then if somebody offends me, you know, if they put something that's not necessarily in keeping with my political views or it says something silly about me, uh, education or something, I'll, I'll remove that particular board, and then if they offend me again, I'll just unfollow all their stuff. Uh, but generally speaking, I usually follow everything because I want to see the entire stream because I can always filter it later. Yes? How does it work when you follow someone? Are you then following everyone they're following? No. Because it's it very interesting like a question. Of, it seems like a, I get a lot of just stuff from people I've never heard of. What you are looking at is the everything stream. No, I'm in my pinners and follow, and then I just get all kinds of stuff from names I don't recognize. Okay. <laughs> Could it be that they repin something? 
Yeah, it's so here. Yeah. Mike, show me that I'm taking your stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so Nicole, who I follow, um, shared this pin that I. It has your name on there too, down there. So. Right, right there. So if you could follow it back and see who pinned, but. Everything on this page, and here's a running tally of stuff. Apparently, Nicole's been busy. <laughs> Just now. <laughs> so, this is Pinners I Follow, which is the default. When I go to the Pinterest front page, I see Pinners I Follow. Let's see if there's anybody who I don't recognize. That tree is nice. Yeah. Well, that's the idea. And, and we can go in for a closer look, and we can see what it's really about. Sometimes the image is relatively small. Uh, we get some extra information down here below. This is why it's important that we cite properly. But if the pin comes to us without proper citation, it's often very difficult to try and find out who made that tree. So it's not Nicole's fault. And it's not necessarily my fault, because I didn't take the time to go and search down who made this tree, because I might never find out. And they still wanted to pin the thing. But if the person who had originally pinned it, because every pin goes up by hand, when you repin, you're taking somebody else's pin that they already put up. And somewhere back at the origin, uh, somebody either chose a website or chose an image or a video on their computer in order to upload. The person who makes that original decision really has to do the work of citation. But there's no police in the matter. And that's problematic. But it's problematic across every network. It's not problematic just because of Pinterest. Yeah, I was just reading today about how spam is increasing. Mm -hmm. Because it's so popular. Yeah. Then, you know, that it's just like every other thing. Right. It's hard to. They, they were giving examples of, you know, people see like a coupon right. on Pinterest, and it's not really a real coupon. It takes you to a fault site. Right. But by curating your boards properly, by making sure that you're not following people who. I, I'm not going to see that. So uh, you were saying that you were coming across pins that you, you had no idea. I, I that should comment. not happen in this. It, it is happening. Oh, really? On the pinners I follow? I am I was on pinners I follow, and I saw one of those force ones from whoever you said had the force group. Yeah, by Jeff. A, Jeff? I'm not following him, but he might be following me. Um, I don't know well, why here, I see Well, here's him. an example. So this is the force board. There is a collaborative board of Star Wars enthusiasts <laughs> that uh, Jeff Trout, who's a librarian at uh, Cape May County Library, asked me to join because he knows that I like Star Wars. So we all, a, a group of Star Wars enthusiasts, add pins that are related to Star Wars. Even even though this is not directly related to Star Wars, you can see why it's related to Star Wars. <laughs> In other words, it's not a scene from a movie. It's a great act, right? A playful, <laughs> playful thing. Um, I'm saying this because Catherine Ridge is on the force board. I'm seeing Biop Jeff onto force. Uh, are you sure you're not a part of force? <laughs> How did I become a part of force? Because he may have added you. So, See, that I don't like. Yeah. I want to approve the fact that I've been added to, I don't know, I'm checking now. I'll tell you in a second. Yeah. I'm not, oh well, yeah, I can I'm go into force How and see. That? Okay. I can go into force and see right now. Oh, yeah. So Sorry, there's but I don't over know. 30 people on this board. So it's like a bacterial infection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and it, and it looks like you know you get. Uh, I'm on there, yeah. I just unfollowed, so I might have to list it on there. Yeah, yeah, I've got so a suggestion. That's alphabetical why. order. <laughs> well, it's it's done by order of appearance. Yeah. yeah. So at any rate. I, I wish I could sort it by activity. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. uh, yeah. So at any rate, we actually had a problem with one of our collaborative boards because some people were not following other people, and so they couldn't see pins that those people were blah, blah, blah. Let's get back on track, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you add information like when you repin or is Yes. That, like that is your opportunity. So when I see a pin that I want to, this, this should be easy. As I scroll down and I look through pins here, uh, see if I can find something that won't be pin.
we'll repin, repin this hook aside. Uh, Audrey Sahan is one of the most prolific pinners that I know, and she, she and I converse all the time. She has a lot of pins. So I'll repin, and I'll put it in art and design. And does anybody know the name of this piece? The Wave. Is it just the Wave? I can't remember. Let's, let's find out. So I'll just take this content. I, I will assume that this is correct, but um, yeah. well, for something like this, it's relatively uh, un. Oh, it's also called simply the wave. Okay. So I will copy this. I will go back to my pen. I will replace this text. See if the characters came through. They did. John. Yes. I would have gone to. Wikipedia's list of sources. Yeah. I, I could have done that, and you should do that. <laughs> I am satisfied that I have improved the quality of this thing to my own level of. You should feel very guilty if this is all you do. And I'm, I'm quite happy. And you can see that I could share this with Twitter right here. I'm not going to do that because I don't really believe in Twitter these days. Um, I'm putting it on my art and design board because this is where I collect artists that I'm interested in. I'm sorry I'm blocking you. I'm sure. And I uh, still have 300 characters, but can you now it's repent. Can you edit a pin after you've pinned it? You can, okay. which is a beautiful, beautiful thing. So many social networks, uh, like Facebook, for example, once you put something up, it's very difficult to edit it. So mm -hmm. I, I'm very embarrassed when I put some. I always delete it and put it back up. Uh, you can't edit a typo, uh, as opposed to pins where you can. And um, you can't do it with Twitter, even, but you can do it in Google+. Plus. So there, that's one of those little things that I think is very important. Uh, and one of the things I love about this. However, <laughs> if I put up a pin or I re repin something and somebody then repins it, they have the ability to edit it or leave it as it is. But even if they leave it as it is, if the typo was in their repin, it stays that way until they change it. It, it is not related. Yeah. It's not a... It's not a link, yeah. right? It's a new version of that pin. And which is kind of a good thing too, because once something is repinned, if I delete my pin, the repin stays. So if you had a good citation, somebody could get rid of it and put it in. They could, exactly. As a matter of fact, my portfolio page, I have all that information, title, by who, where did you get it? I could put year and other information. Uh, if somebody wants to, they could say, they could repin my pin and say, this sucks. <laughs> but that's, I'm okay with that. Not everybody is, but I'm okay with it. Is there okay. a limit to the number of pins that you could upload? <laughs> that is a great question. The answer is no. Uh, video, I don't believe you can upload video. You can only repin, you can only pin video from other sources like YouTube. Okay. And so you, you you could get into trouble if you tried to upload a huge image. There's probably a limit to the size of the image you can upload. It's probably limited at two megabytes or four megabytes, probably two megabytes. Uh, because this is not, you're not looking at Pinterest in order to examine the fine details of a ancient Roman wall or something. I, it, there might be something in the future that does that, but this is not what that's about. This is just about getting the word out with, with some supporting information. How did they get money? I mean, what supports them? So uh, right now, they do. They aren't doing direct advertising. They don't have advertising in, uh, advertising in the middle of pins. There are some cases where they have relationships with vendors, and this might be something that um, Brian actually works for a, a major clothing retailer. And uh, we were talking. It's okay if you share that. <laughs> it's not secret. <laughs> I don't want to give you any free advertising. Oh. No. So, so Brian works for Anthropology, which is one of my favorite brands. Even though I don't purchase their clothes, I, my significant other does. And so it was very interesting to have a conversation about how they're beginning to use Pinterest. And we were discussing the, the ways that they might do it that they're not doing it now, such as their beautiful uh, display windows being recorded in a really high quality way by their photographers as opposed to some amateur photographer. 
uh, without a proper setup, without proper lighting, etc. And making sure that a pin goes up about that, because sometimes that's the thing that gets the person to walk through the door, is their, their beautiful external, if you don't know anthropology, go to, go to uh, Market Fair. They have always beautiful, artistically done um, windows, and they have, in Philly, a, a, a huge window front that, that they decorate. So at any rate, it's those kinds of things that that particular brand, a non-library, should be thinking about in order to garner uh, a, a brand interest. However, he's not going to be able to put a price or sell the window decoration, right? But he could sell the dresses and shoes that they sell and the other items that they sell because a link that goes to their their version of your ILS, which is their uh, their selling engine, whatever engine that is, their, uh, what's the word I'm thinking? Online store. E-commerce. E-commerce. Yeah. yeah. His e-commerce is your ILS, right? So you want to make sure that the link that you're putting in is to your ILS to get people to go in and reserve a copy or get it sent to them or, or whatever. He wants people to go in and click on his e-commerce engine so that he can sell something, because that's their point of being in Pinterest. Your point is to get people to use your media, right? So the question really becomes, what are you doing? So anyway, anthropology, though, is probably going to end up having a relationship with Pinterest that says, every time somebody clicks through Pinterest to get an item and, and actually sells an item on anthropology's site, we'll give you 4% or something back. That's how they'll make money. Or they'll end up advertising in some unique way, or they'll have Google ads at the bottom of the page, or whatever the case might be. Right now, they have uh, uh, VC, uh, venture capitalism money through the wazoo. They're, they're such a popular brand, and nobody has quite picked up on exactly why they're so popular, but people are throwing money at them to stay popular because they know that they'll get their, their investment back when they do work out exactly how they're going to monetize their vision. And there's lots of ways they can monetize it, yes? So if you had a library website, would you put in a little frame about what linking to Pinterest? And would you have a Pinterest site and like that? So here's the thing. If you have an ILS or a website where you have that kind of control over the engine, uh, the platform, but even if it's WordPress or if it's uh, um, Drupal or whatever the case might be, um, you can do exactly that. And Brian and I were talking about how Anthropology is doing that. On each of the items that they have in their catalog, they're going to add a pin it button. And I saw my first one today, surprisingly. The same way you see like and you see plus one and you see tweet this, you'll start to see a pin it button. And your library can just as easily have those items in order to have people start to advertise on your behalf for free because they like your stuff. And the nice thing about those those pin it buttons is you have control over what goes in that message. Exactly. Right. I mean, the, the user can change it, but you can put like a proper citation in there and then it's no work for them to cite the, the source. Right. So. It's more work for them to delete it. Right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> and I personally, this is a little insight into into my way of thinking, as an experiment, started using my Amazon, with, with Amazon, you can become a, um, a associate. associate. <laughs> and what that means is that if somebody goes and clicks on your link that you provide for Amazon, and they successfully buy the thing, you can get 15% back on that sale. And so when I put up a pin from Amazon, and Amazon has everything, right? So if I really love a book, and I want to share that book, I would love to just reshare your iOS links, but they're not there yet. Mm -hmm. um, right now, what I'm doing is I'm going to find them on Amazon, gathering my associate link, putting that in Pinterest. And when somebody clicks through and buys that book, I get 15% of the sale. So it's a very interesting way of uh, having commerce happen. But you're not thinking about selling necessarily. You're thinking about getting people to participate. Participation is so much easier. It's selling, <laughs> you know, because people already, they, they, how can you compete with free, right? <laughs> right.
the New York Times bestsellers in a, in a visual state, and it would be such a phenomenal way to see a book, you have some place to go and pin it so you know to go back and look Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, the network's success is so new that many, many uh, top level resources like New York Times, New York Times is actually on top of it, but uh, so many other resources like libraries have ignored it up until now. And they're starting to realize how important it is to their brand, to their patrons, to their constituents, to their stakeholders, right? Um, if you don't have an account or anything with Pinterest and you just go to their website and yep. you look at their pictures, how is it determined which ones are on that top front of the page? That would be an everything listing right. because it has no context related to you. So if instead of pinners I follow, I click on everything, it shows me people who I don't know, right? And are those just random ones selected? These are probably the latest pins pinned. The latest pins, okay. But then you can search for specific things if you want to, correct? Yeah, absolutely. I can go into the search engine and I can, who wants to give me a search term? How about anthropology? Anthropology, there you go. <laughs> oh, that's free advertising. <laughs> right? So let's see what Melissa would like. Oh, that's beautiful. See this, uh, this banner here that says $24? Mm -hmm. That is a part of the Pinterest engine. So if you type a dollar sign followed by a number, it will put that banner on there. And that's, I, I, do you have an associate style uh, engine where somebody can become, they can get a kickback for referring somebody? I don't think so. I don't think so either. So chances are that link goes directly to your point of sale. Mm -hmm and somebody typed in $24 because they thought it was interesting. And you'll see some repeat pins from time to time. So are the, those aren't necessarily all things that the store has put out, they, they could be? Chances are they are. Uh -huh. and, and by doing a search on that keyword, I have filtered the entirety of the engine to just show me stuff that mentions anthropology. And anthropology is not spelled with a Y. Mm -hmm. Anthropology the brand. And so unless somebody is misspelling the word and it refers to anthropology, the study of man, um, it will show items from the store. Right? Mm -hmm. Right. Is there any edit on the type of pictures that go up here? I mean, do you see a lot of inappropriate or things that you, can. you wouldn't want. You can. I, I believe that you can probably report an image. <laughs> Although I've not seen that. I have seen very inappropriate photography and images on, on here, but it is not the norm. Okay. You, you almost have to search it out. So uh, part of that is it's interesting gender demographic. I think, where um, most of the users on the system, up to 90%, the latest stats say, are female. Hmm. And so there's less, you, by, by gender generalization, you would see less porn on this engine. Is anybody um, giving these things keywords so that they can be categorized? Well, the categorization happens at the board level, and it also can happen with a hashtag. So, yeah, hashtag right there. On yeah, the best practice would be, where'd you say it? You're on the knobs right there. Right there. Right there. Knobs. It's got the anthropology hashtag. Yeah, that hashtag, that dollar okay. sign, is saying this is related to anthropology. This is a categorization method, a meta tagging method, etc. Um, but notice that other terms that are not hashtags show up. The hashtag prefix is a way of saying this item is related to this idea. And so that's best practice. Most people are not doing that right now. And that's another thing you can do is you can specify a hashtag to go in the description if you have the pin it button. Right. Uh, so that you know that most of the stuff that's pinned from your site will have a hashtag linking back to wherever you want. Are you saying if somebody modified the JavaScript in the bookmarklet? 
Well, it's not the it's not the bookmark like the, like if you have the pin it button on yes. oh, on, okay, yeah. on like a, a page for a book. But or you something. are you modified essentially this code, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. I'm okay. I, like I'm not the coder, so I don't know exactly. So what she did. chances are you took this code, added a couple of uh, keywords. There's probably in the API the ability to set the the default in the description as mm -hmm. it goes up, mm -hmm. but without getting too too technical for anybody. Um, that's the pin it button. That's where we were supposed to be going. So if we scroll over. Is there any place that has guidelines on how to Yeah, to there's guidelines right here. So when I clicked on about, there's all these things, including pin etiquette, getting started, support, goodies, careers, press, team. If we click on goodies, It gives you this pin it button. By dragging this button to your bookmark bar, as I have, you could do it in Internet Explorer, you could do it in Chrome, you could do it in uh, Firefox, other browsers too. Uh, you have the ability to visit a site, then click on pin it, and the JavaScript in that bookmark grabs the images on that page, asks you to choose one of those images, and then write a description. So instead of uploading it directly, or feeding it the link, all I have to do is visit a site, like the IEEE site, and click on pin it, especially after I highlight something. And then what it does is it takes the text I highlighted, the image that I chose, and it gives me an opportunity to make a categorization. I can add hashtags to my description, I can add citation information to my description, but this is the easiest, quickest way to get information off of a website. And the link to the site is included by default when you pin it. Okay. So this, this interface is not quite exactly what happens when you have the pin it button on your website. I think it-, it No, you're like right. It. It's, it is a little bit different. Yeah. But I, don't, I have not come across the documentation for the API, so mm -hmm. I don't really know. Um, but Chances are that you can, with a proper API, that you'd be able to modify that to do yeah. whatever you want. You could probably I imagine it's probably something you have to contact Pinterest directly about. Oh, that's yeah. that's possible. But hopefully, in the future, we'll have an API that yeah. your technologist who manages your website at, or, uh, at the lower level, assisted me, would be able to just feed that information into each of your pin it buttons by pulling that information from your database, which is a part of your ILS so that anybody who goes to your ILS, browses through, clicks on a button, would be able to have information from the pin, or from the item that they're pinning, automatically sucked into the description. We're not there yet. It's a relatively new system. Again, not going to pin this. So, all right, let's get back. It is now 8.18. When are we done? 8.30. Okay. I don't think I'm going to make it all the way through my presentation. Um, because we only got one link in. Uh, however, if you, if you go to popular, popular is one of those choices. Remember, we did as you follow everything video is popular. There's also GIFs. GIFs are anything that has a number attached to it, like I said, a, a dollar sign in it or a pound sign in a number. Uh, if you see popular, these are things that have been commented on a great deal. These are things that have been repinned a great deal. You can see that this has 24 likes, one comment, and 51 repins. Uh, the more comments, the more likes, mm -hmm. and the more uh, repins there are, the more likely it will end up on popular. If you want to see a broad range of good pins, this is a way to do it. Right, and as we're going through this sort of um, overarching view of what Pinterest pinners find interesting, you might not necessarily see anything that is specifically library related. But every once in a while, you might, and that's the one that you want to repin. So let's say that. Um, That's a very bad example. <laughs> uh, let's say that you had a culinary program 
which many libraries do, many public libraries do, a little bit academic libraries. Uh, you might go to the site of the chef or chefs that you are using in your programming and repin imagery attached to their recipes in order to reinforce the fact that you have programming, that it's food related, that your chef is related to your programming, and it all ends up in the same place. And if they don't have that stuff, if they don't already have a site and with their recipes and their um, photography, make sure that you have somebody snapping pictures so that you can put pin it directly and tell the story of programming that you had in your library on Saturday. So that the next time you want to fill a room for your programming, you can refer people to that and they'll say, well, when's the next one? That looks really good. I would really like to learn that. Maybe you have a Lego program. Maybe you have, uh, you know, I'm thinking about programming that I'm familiar with, but uh, Princeton Public Library has some of the most amazing programming, some of the things that I just saw in their newsletter today. Uh, they should all be pinned, and chances are they are being pinned, although I've not seen the PPL board. But I know Jamie Herman, who is responsible for most of the programming at that library, is an active pinner. She's the one that introduced me to the system. And so uh, by having a board or boards related to the programming that's going on at the library, as well as new arrivals and new acquisitions, as well as uh, media reinforcement, as well as political information that sometimes goes on in the library, as well as music, videos, performance, that is the kind of thing that brings people in. And you can have dates of events. You can have uh, historical dates. You can have um, background information. You can have links to more information. You can point them back to your site. You can point them back to your ILS and so forth. So this is all just to say, these are a bunch of people who are my most active followers and people who I follow on uh, Pinterest. The reason I have the link to Gmail is because I recently changed my settings in Pinterest here. If you go, to, after you log in, under your face, there's a settings button there where you can change things like your email address, your email settings, your password, etc., your photo, whether or not you link to Facebook, whether or not it shows up on timeline, that's where it is. You can find people who are on Facebook who are all also in Pinterest and get a list of people who are actively using the system. I turn all that on because what it does is it feeds my Facebook feed with my interests. And the reason that I have Facebook there is for people to find out about me when I'm not talking to them, right? So if somebody wants to know whether or not I'm worth talking to or whether or not we share the same interests, all they have to do is go to my Facebook page in which my Pinterest stream is very active, probably the most active thing there. But what I want to show you with uh, email, email settings, is that there's all these Settings. You can either turn email on or off completely, whether or not group board pins come through, whether or not comments come through, whether or not likes come through, repins, follows. This is the big one. <laughs> I have a couple hundred followers, and I follow a couple hundred people. So I've had it set up to immediately notify me when somebody repins something. And I think I'm really good at curating pins. It's, it's like a strange skill. And you might be really good at curating curate pins related to your library, and I hope that you are. Make them interesting. But what would happen would be somebody would come to one of my boards, usually a, a, an active follower, and they would repin everything in a board. And they would click, 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 and they might have 20 pins. And so over the space of 10 minutes, I'd get six emails, <laughs> right? That's not productive. So uh, that's a really important one, whether or not you receive email immediately or once daily. And my email has slowed down considerably since I did that. Do you choose the time when the emails will come? Or no, it chooses it for you. Once oh. daily means it comes around 2 o'clock in the morning for me. 
So I, it's like the first thing I see in the morning. Mm -hmm. Well, you still get six of them. No, I get one because it's once daily. So here's some best practices. Um, actually participate. Like I said, many users go in, they create an account, they don't really understand what it is. They don't have the benefit of having this discussion to see what is really there to be seen. And they don't create any more pins, or they don't repin, or they don't participate in conversation, or they don't like anything. And by not doing that, you appear to be uninteresting to other pinners who have taken it on as an interesting methodology of sharing. So I would advise you that if you are serious about Pinterest, especially from your library's perspective, you have to do something at least once a day, or else you're going to appear to be boring from a Pinterest point of view. And that may be fine with you, but if you are interested in using it in order to build your brand, you really have to strategize a bit about it. And that means being active. Updating regularly is part of that. Respecting copyright and ownership, we talked about, about that already. As librarians, information literacy is your bread and butter. Teach others how to pin. Teach others how to refer to items on Facebook. It's not just about Pinterest. This is a great opportunity, though. If librarians are not doing it, nobody else is going to do it. Links. Make sure that you have links, either in your description, in which case they become highlighted as links, but certainly, if you are uploading a pin directly, the link is not automatically added. When I uploaded that photo directly from my hard drive, it did not create a link. If I want to have a link attached to that to take it back to my site, I either have to put it in my description like I did, remember I said via 365sketches.org, or I have to go back in, edit the pin, and add that link. In the case of using Amazon uh, associate links, that's what I have to do anyway, because if I just go to the Amazon page and click on pin it, it will not include my associate's link. And the same is probably true for anthropology, unless you're using pin it buttons. You're probably not going to do that at, at the beginning, unless you have a, a developer who wants to work with Pinterest for six months. Um, and so you have to make sure that the link that you put in there is properly going to the place that you want it to go. If, you, if it is your ILS, then hopefully you'd be able to just navigate to your ILS, click on pin it, it would grab the link properly, allow you to grab a picture, and that would be it. But sometimes it's a little bit more work than that. Commenting, repinning, and extending brand. Making sure that if you do use this in order to reinforce your library or reinforce your personal brand, that you are doing it within that brand. That you are using language that your library would use in a press statement. Or you are uh, using content not necessarily just to be cutesy or because you think it's fun, but because it actually represents the brand of your library. If you are a high-ranked uh, academic institution, you don't necessarily want to put jokey pins on your page. You may, but chances are you don't. Uh, if you are a local community-based public library who uh, has amazing children's programming, then flood your pin boards with amazingly interesting pins for children. And vary those pins and vary those pin boards, but focus on your audience. You know who, who your audience is, hopefully. But if you don't know your brand, you might want to work that out before you start to uh, focus too much on pin boards, because you, you may end up having to erase all your pins. Um, don't only pin your own stuff. Even as libraries, you don't necessarily want to only pin things that are a part of your particular library. You could, but you also may want to, as I said, get into the philosophy of your library and uh, go and find great quotes from great philosophers who reinforce the idea of scholarship, librarianship, uh, improving community, improving academia, respecting copyright, etc. Those pins exist, and they are properly cited, and you should repin them in various boards. Using group boards. So uh, as we said, there's a couple group boards that I want to tell you about. One is this one about Star Wars. That we were, a bunch of Star Wars enthusiasts uh, came together on this group board. And whenever we find a, a Star Wars related pin that's interesting, we will repin it. And the category that we choose is this, is this group board called Force. And there's over 30 people in it. And it's really fun for me. Um, you could use it amongst your staff and you can limit it to a certain number of people, people who are not a part of the board. Is that not true? Uh, 
Oh, okay. I, I'm, you gave me a concerned look. I was worried. <laughs> I, believe, <laughs> I believe you can limit your boards to just the people who you share with. Those people can always share with other people, but uh, it's sort of um, an unwritten rule that you don't necessarily invite people unless the flavor of the board is that as many people as possible come in. If it is just shared with your staff, your staff should not necessarily share with people outside of your staff. So, but one thing you could do is you could have a board that is just internal, just internally built. It would be publicly available because there's no such thing as private boards in, in uh, Pinterest. Where you begin to develop the kinds of things that you want to do. You might have a board called Library Innovations, as I do, uh, where you invite a bunch of people who are on your staff or a bunch of uh, reputable librarians who you respect in order to have a conversation through Pinterest about what it is that you want to do next as an organization. It doesn't necessarily just have to be about bringing in patrons or reinforcing brand. It could be about building brand. It could be about building the visual part of your brand. It could be about choosing colors for a conference room. It could be about a whole bunch of things. Keywords and hashtags we've talked about quite a bit. You want to make sure that you are giving metadata in a system that does not allow for metadata very easily. Hashtags always work, usually. <laughs> uh, and there is a link that if you visit my site at john.lamasny.com, you'll be able to see these slides exactly as they are. If I update these slides, you will see those updates. Uh, but this link takes you to a bunch of other tips. Is, your, um, is it up there yet? The, the slideshow is not up there okay. yet. Just the abstract from this talk. Okay. Here are some examples of group boards and collaborations. I'll show you one that I thought was really interesting that you might want to entice your uh, patrons with. This was a board called Story in which uh, the original person made a pin and numbered it and said, once upon a time, and then pinned another pin with a number two that said she kept her sadness to herself until that one fateful day when she walked through the town and started to tell a story and allowed everybody who was on that board to add to that story. The story doesn't necessarily just have to be a, a fiction-based narrative. It could be the story of how your library came to be, or it could be the story of what your library should be. You know, you could, you could uh, have a pin board that you open to specific patrons who are active patrons in which you say, what do you love about libraries? And they pin either pictures of spaces in libraries or pictures of items in libraries, and they describe what it is that makes them have an affection for that. It may not be for you. I'm just throwing out an idea. <laughs> but it may be exactly the kind of thing that pin Pinterest could help you to do in order to reinforce what your library wants to be. Not necessarily what it is, not what it was, what it wants to be. <laughs> That's a rhetorical question. What is information literacy? Uh, also, how we cite an APA format, any reference library, and probably could tell you off the top of their head. Uh, what do Facebook, Pinterest, and a scholarly article all have in common? That's a little bit more difficult. Does anybody have an answer for that? Peer review. Peer review. Could be peer review, sure. It could potentially be citation, proper citation. It could be um, uh, proper respect of copyright. It is not always, but it could be. Uh, what are the allowances for fair use? And, and we talked a little bit about those before. The idea of uh, satire, the idea of uh, critique, the idea of learning, you know, being in a learning platform, a closed learning platform. Uh, so there are certain places where you are allowed to use an original work without so much as uh, permission in order to extend the benefit of that item. And especially in cases where you change it a bit by its critique or by its uh, special use. Why is Pinterest in the news for copyright violation? Because it's new. <laughs> it's the newest kid on the block, that's why. Uh, why does Pinterest say they own all your pins? So they're, they have an awful terms of service. And then in terms of service, there's a, there's a couple of sketchy things, but I'll condense it down to the idea that in one stretch of their terms of service, it says, 
if you upload something here, it's ours, which is just uh, part of my French bullshit. Right? <laughs> they, they, you can't own something that you don't own. Does Mendeley right? do that as well? I mean, sure. Throw that in there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's the exception. It, I'll tell you why they're doing it. It's because if a photographer uh, who makes their money from their photographs has an image that is repinned onto Pinterest, uh, the photographer cannot go to Pinterest and say, you provided this platform and allowed this person to do this with my work. They can say, well, uh, we did not necessarily, we just provided a platform, we did not actually promote the misuse of your work. And they have, in their terms of service, clear, they have guidelines for pinning, making sure that you don't pin something that you don't like. Um, but it is patently absurd to think that just because somebody pins something in original work, that Pinterest could own it. You can't, you can't give copyright where copyright is not given. It's as simple as that. Um, but that's, that's why they say it. They want to protect themselves a bit. I could be wrong about this, but I'm pretty sure terms of service are not a binding contract. Especially if you're not 18. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do want to show you the search. If we do a search on libraries in Pinterest, we, by default, are searching on pins. <laughs> uh, we can also search on boards. Right? So here's school libraries, home libraries, and these are the people who created these boards. And there are a lot of them. If you think that librarians are not on Pinterest, you, you are not paying attention. There are a lot of people talking about libraries here. And not always, not always about books. And then if we search on libraries for people, you can find libraries who have created Pinterest accounts. And you can see how they are using those systems. Hopefully using a lot of the suggestions we went over tonight, probably using suggestions I would not have ever thought of. But they did, and they're waiting for you to find them. You saw all of the search options that exist in Pinterest just now. You can search for a keyword or keywords, although I don't think that there's any Boolean logic in that search engine. Uh, you can search for people, boards, pins, period. I think that they can do so much more. If you look at the advanced search in Google, you, there's a list of things that you can search for. You can search by color, you can search by size of image, you can search by video content, you can search by site, you can search by uh, license, you can search by so many things. You should be able to do that in Pinterest. And when Pinterest has that kind of engine, it will be much more powerful. Uh, meta tagging, hashtags work, but it would be really useful if I could actually make a comma separated list of tags that would be recognized as tags. And I could see tag clouds from a particular person's pins so that I could see what they are interested in in text based format at a glance. It's not there yet. These are all going to be made into pins on my Pinterest suggestion board, by the way. Uh, photo tagging, geotagging, in other words, I should be able to uh, tag people in photos or items in photos, and I should also be able to tag places in photos, much like I already can in Picasa, in uh, Facebook, in Flickr, etc. Uh, an API with a stats engine. They apparently have an API, which I just found out about tonight, um, but they don't have great statistics. You can, you can uh, modify, and, uh, modify the code and create statistics by adding a piece of code to your descriptions, uh, which ties into Google statistics, Google Analytics. Um, but that's a lot of work that I shouldn't have to do. The engine should take care of that for me. I should be able to go to any pin, see exactly where it's been, see how many times it's been pinned, what the frequency is, etc. They're not there yet. Licensing options. I should be able to say at the creation of the pin, I don't want this to be repinned, <laughs> which would be ridiculous. I, I should be able to say, this is not mine, or this is mine. I should be able to create a Commons license it. I should be able to do what I, what I can 
The reason I haven't gotten into that business is because if I upload something that is not mine, I could still potentially say that I'm licensing it, licensing it a certain way, and that's just not right. Certification of identity. I don't know who anybody is on Pinterest. I, I don't know who anybody is on Facebook. I have a good idea because I've met a lot of those people in person, most of them, in fact. Um, but there is no way to certify identity. And so if uh, somebody says that they're anthropology, how do I know? I only know because I had a conversation. But that, that's not a good way to know. There is no Android application. There is an iPhone application, but no Android application. And that really upsets me because I'm an Android fanboy as well. Um, the, the mobile site is not bad, though. The m.pinterest.com is a pretty good way to get around that site. It's a little slow loading. Um, the iPhone application is much better. I doubt that they're going to develop an app Android application. I'll bet you they'll stay with the mobile site. There needs to be threaded discussion as opposed to flat discussion. When you put up a comment, it just shows up underneath the last person that commented. Sometimes I want to reply to a specific comment. Anytime I ever see a flat discussion comment system, I, I'm a little disgusted. Uh, show pins rather than boards by default. When I get an email that says, uh, Audrey Sam, we pinned your pin, whatever. I want to be able to click on her name and go to all of her pins as opposed to all of her boards because I usually end up going to her pins anyway because I want to see the latest stuff she put up, not necessarily her collections, but the latest things she's been interested in. And there is another link here on Mashable that uh, talks about some of the ideas that they're already thinking about for redesign. That's all I got for you. Thank you so much. to address questions if anybody wants to stay. If you have to go, I understand completely. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, one comment. We do have uh, Ziploc bags if you want to take leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> and I will be posting a summary of the talk to the, to the candidates. Leave your ideas on the table. Thank you. I just need a link to the end. Thank you very, very much. Yeah.